Hello beekeepers. I'm Jim Two here, giving you a little video supplement to the article that I'm submitting for February 2022 Bee Culture Magazine. I'm on two moves this year. I'm exploring keeping my beehive smaller and more manageable for me as I become an older and older man with less and less energy. And secondly, I'm also exploring the way that beekeeping is transitioning and has transitioned in my years of keeping bees. It's always evolving. It's always mixing. And in many cases in the catalog, things linger, like medium brood foundation, Hoffman frames. Why, what are those holes in the ends of the wooden end bars for? So if I were a new beekeeper, it'd be tough to start up. Some of the transitions I've lived through, I've written about, and I documented them very poorly because who cares about these box hives? But in the late 1960s, early 1970s, it was routine to find box hive beekeepers who just nailed some boards together, improvised, <clears throat> usually tall boxes, tall being 30, 35 inches, usually about 10 to 12 inches square, maybe an X frame in the middle, and it's just full of bees and wild comb. And it's really an interesting beehive because the bees build the inside appliances, not beekeepers. So there was a trend, there was a procedure to modernize beekeeping and to get them out of those old boxes. And that was the right thing to do and that was the wrong thing to do. I should have photographed more because that was a transition period. Got a few, a few pictures, but I, we, do, we went through uh, tens and tens and tens of these boxes of transferring these things over. I never lined bees, but that procedure is nearly completely gone. Tom Saley, a prominent scientist right now, has recently written a book and has used bee lining in his research effort and kind of given it a fresh breath of life. But bee lining would be one of those things that you do just for love. You go out and you mark a bee and you do things in reverse. You find a bee on a plant and then you try to figure out from whence she came. That's an enjoyable thing to do. You beekeep backwards. Here's the bee, where's her home? You see, in years gone by, that was a big deal and I had a unique story that I presented to you from uh, an individual who was a child at the time who actually lined bees with, uh, without a lining box. They did it primitively. I wrote about it for you. It's an interesting story and I thank E.T. for privileging me with his memory. Next month I want to consider this theme again. And I want to go into some of the idiosyncrasies of our voluminous bee catalogs now. You know, in years gone by, they were just a few pages. You could fold them up, put them in your shirt pocket. And now these things are huge. I can't imagine the cost to make these really nice, fancy color catalogs that we have. And they really inspire me to spend money and to buy all these things. That really, honestly, when all is said and done, you don't have to have. You just want because you're a beekeeper. So I'm enjoying writing about this during the pandemic phase by the time we get to February where you are now. I have no idea what that'll be like, but I continue to be somewhat restricted. So this has been entertaining me at home. My bees and I have become much closer, probably to my bees' chagrin, but I've enjoyed my bees a lot during this period of growth and reflection. Hey, thank you for reading. And thank you for keeping up with these videos and watching them. I enjoy doing them for you, and I enjoy staying in the bee world. I look forward to talking to you next month. This is Jim, telling you bye.